Hello viewers, you are watching Student's Diary and this is Abdul Rahman and today we will discuss uh, some of the subtopic of the gluconeogenesis that is glucose alanine cycle and Cori cycle. We all know that glu gluconeogenesis is the formation of glucose molecule from non-carbohydrate precursor and that non-carbohydrate precursor could be lactate or it could be glycerol and it could be an alanine. Lactate will be converted into a pyruvate and that will result into glucose formation which we, uh, we have discussed in our earlier video the three rearrangement steps of the gluconeogenesis and the second molecule which is a glycerol which is a lipid in nature and this glycerol is basically formed from triacyl glycerol and then it will be converted into glycerol 3 phosphate and then from glycerol 3 phosphate into dihydroxyacetone phosphate which is one of the intermediate of the look uh, of the glycolysis process and from there it will be converted into a glucose molecule thirdly uh, alanine which is a uh, amino acid the common amino acid uh, we had studied it in protein and that alanine will be converted into pyruvate and from pyruvate to onward it will be converted into glucose we will look into detail of all these three uh, process first of all the curry cycle curry cycle is curry uh, is uh, after the name of the scientist who first uh, explained this process uh, in this cycle lactate is basically we know that released from red blood cells and all other cells which lack the mitochondria or even if there is a low oxygen concentration uh, that will result in the production of the lactate through glycolysis so what will happen to that lactate in the curry cycle lactate is basically also released by skeletal muscle during exercise you know that uh, when we are vigorously exercising our muscle need a lot of ATP so it means muscle cell will enhance the process of glycolysis which will require more amount of oxygen um, but uh, to meet the requirement oxygen will not be available at that amount which will result into a hypoxic condition in the cell and that will result in a lactate production so we know that when there are hypoxic condition pyruvate will not lead to mitochondria but rather it will be converted into lactate so in skeletal muscle during exercise lactate formation will take place and in the curry cycle that lactate will be utilized and that lactate from the muscle will be transferred to the liver and then in the liver it will be reconverted back into pyruvate by the help of enzyme lactate dehydrogenase which we also known it in a short form as LDH and then from pyruvate then glu glucose will be formed which will known as gluconeogenesis this diagram will give you a little bit more detail of this process which we known as the Curie cycle we said that when there are a lot of physical activity in some kind of muscles skeletal muscles specifically that will result in more uh, more uh, demand of oxygen and if that oxygen demands are not uh, maintained uh, that will result in the production of lactate from pyruvate so that glucose will go through glycolysis and it will give you pyruvate so when that there will be deficiency of oxygen that pyruvate will be converted into lactate so that lactate will accumulate in that muscles that's why we feel pain when we do some vigorous exercise in our muscle for one or two days that lactate accumulation can be then cannot be reutilized in muscle because the enzyme or the machinery which are required for conversion of the lactate is not available in the muscle so this lactate should be transferred to the liver because we know that the gluconeogenesis process 
take place only in the liver so that lactate will be transported through blood into the liver and in the liver once it reaches to the liver the enzymes are present over here and it will convert the lactate into pyruvate back and that pyruvate will go through that gluconeogenesis rearrangement steps and it will result into formation of glucose 6-phosphate and then glucose 6-phosphate will be converted into glucose so that glucose which has been converted into pyruvate and lactate in the muscles will be again reformed from the lactate into glucose and will be transported from the liver to the muscle again to be reutilized again for the energy purposes so this cycle which take place from the muscles to the liver and from the liver to the muscle we call this as Curry cycle and this is basically utilized uh, use for the utilization of the lactate for the glucose formation the next non precursor uh, non carbohydrate precursor which is used for the glucose formation is glycerol which is basically fats content glycerol is uh, uh, produced in our body with the uh, fat metabolism in adipose tissues and from the adipose tissues it is transported to the liver and when there is a signal uh, from the glucagon or some other signal uh, which is which basically uh, demand from these liver cells to produce uh, glucose so that it could meet the hypoglycemic condition so that glycerol will be transported to the liver uh, through blood and then will be it will be converted into glycerol 3 phosphate by glycerol kinase as you can see in this example once it reached to the liver this glycerol will be converted into glycerol 3 phosphate of course one atp will be utilized in that case and the enzyme which will be used is glycerol kinase and uh, glycerol 3 phosphate then will go through oxidation process with the help of uh, enzyme that is glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase and with the addition of one NAD plus in that NAD plus will be converted into NADH and it will give you a dihydroxyacetone phosphate we know that dihydroxyacetone is an in intermediate of the glycolysis if you remember if you recall that fructose 1,6 bis phosphate when split in glycolysis it form glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate so dihydroxyacetone phosphate will enter into the gluconeogenesis process and will be converted into fructose 1,6 bis phosphate one point to remember here that that NAD plus here is important when the concentration of NAD plus is high in the cytoplasm it will positively regulate or you can say that it will stimulate this glycerol glycerol 3 phosphate to be converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate in other words we can say that nad plus if it is high in the cytoplasm it will encourage the process of gluconeogenesis from glycerol so this was the production of glucose from glycerol content now the third non-carbohydrate precursor is alanine molecule which is an amino acid which will be converted into uh, glucose uh, through glucose alanine cycle and uh, you know that exercising muscle produce large quantities of pyruvate and uh, because muscle cannot synthesize urea from amino nitrogen there are the enzymes which are required for our conversion of the amino nitrogen into the urea uh, is not present in the muscle so the glucose alanine cycle is used to transfer the amino nitrogen to the liver so because we know that amino nitrogen is toxic to the cells or body so that should be converted into urea but it cannot happen into the in the muscle so this cycle is basically used to transfer that uh, molecules into the liver uh, so and the purpose of the glucose alanine cycle is 
primarily a mechanism for skeletal muscle to eliminate the nitrogen uh, as we had said that amino nitrogen uh, which cannot be eliminated in muscle so that cycle is basically used to eliminate the additional nitrogen from the muscle cells and secondly is to replenish the energy supply to maintain the energy supply for the muscle at the time of demand this diagram will give you a little bit more explanation of uh, this glucose alanine cycle when there are increased activity inside the muscle uh, so there will be in increased amount of glycolysis because muscle need more amount of atp so that more glycolysis will result in the more production of the pyruvate so there will be a lot of accumulation of the pyruvate on the other hand there are muscles protein which contain the amino acids and that amino acids when degraded will be converted into ammonia which is a kind of toxic material that should be uh, converted into like less toxic substance but uh, the problem is that muscle didn't contain such enzyme which convert that ammonia into urea so instead that ammonia will be converted into glutamate so the glutamate will combine with this pyruvate which happened through glycolysis so that will result with the help of that alanine transaminase enzyme transaminase means that it will transfer the amino group from this molecule so it will be converted into alanine and then also it will give you alpha ketoglutarate we will not discuss about the alpha ketoglutarate we will discuss it into a Krebs cycle later on that alanine uh, which has been formed from pyruvate in glutamate with the help of this enzyme will be now transported in through blood into the liver and uh, because our body need glucose uh, so it will be converted uh, with the help of again alanine transaminase into again it will be converted back uh, into pyruvate and glutamate with the addition of alpha ketoglutarate uh, means the alanine and alpha ketoglutarate will be uh, combined together and it will give you back the glutamate and the pyruvate so it is the same reaction but reverse of it will happen in the uh, liver uh, and that glutamate which will be converted back into ammonia and now the liver has the enzyme which was not present here in the muscles now the liver has the enzyme which can convert that toxic ammonia into the urea so this is known as urea cycle we will discuss this one later on as well in our next videos uh, but our main concern is here is the gluconeogenesis process because the body need glucose at uh, any cost uh, so in that case pyruvate which is formed from the alanine that pyruvate will go through that gluconeogenesis rearrangement steps and it will give you the glucose molecule and uh, that glucose molecule will be recycled back to the muscles and it will be reutilized for replenishing purpose of the energy for the production of the energy through glycolysis so that glucose alanine cycle has two purposes one is that it will in the muscle cells uh, is lacking enzyme so it will get rid of this ammonia molecule and it will be converted into urea in the liver uh, and secondly uh, the pyruvate which is accumulated in the muscle will also be uh, converted uh, in uh, into the glucose in the liver so this is the importance of the uh, alanine glucose alanine cycle